What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build, with today's showcase focusing on the brand new aspect, Harold the Storm, and showing you how to make full use of this new subclass perk in the best way possible. The aspect works similar to the Hunter's Tempest Strike in the way it vertically hits its targets, and slows them down, but this ability has a much more limited range compared to the Hunter's, and it has a much better synergy with your Whispers compared to the Hunter's subclass as a whole. Now this may sound like a poor man's Tempest Strike with even more shorter range, but what you need to know is that the aspect is actually very powerful in close quarter fighting and can work as a brilliant counter to catching charging enemies out, both in PvE or PvP. On top of that, you can still use your Shiver Strike if you don't want to opt in and use the ability instead, as it acts as a 2 in 1 ability that can activate anytime you like. And finally, the ability works in the same way that Glacier Grenades work, so with the right whispers, you can go a long way with this combo. Now of course I'm going to show you a prime example as to how we can use our found knowledge around this aspect and create a setup that will constantly rotate your abilities back and forth so that you never run out, but also so you don't have to rely on specific perks or mods to get the full benefit of this. This will be a very simple build that even a new light player can create. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So starting off with the subclass, we'll be using the Behemoth Titan class with Howl the Storm and Tectonic Harvest aspect. And what these two will do is provide us with a second option to create even more mini stasis shards while on the go. Now when I mean second, I mean our first option will be using the glacial grenades to create them, while our second is of course the how of the storms once we proc it. Now as you may know, with the tectonic harvest aspect active, when you destroy a frozen stasis target, you will create a stasis shard that will provide mini energy to you and your teammates. When you combine this with the Glacier Grenades on their own, you can create 5 individual shards that will be enough to provide you with a full or near full amount of mini energy back again. Now from what I've found, when using the Howl of the Storm aspect as well on the zone and destroying them, you can create another 5 individual ones for a max total of 10 shards on the field. With this in mind, you can repeat your charge mini over and over again, as long as you have both your mini and grenades at full. But that's pretty basic even with the added mods and perks, so I decided to bring in a perfect exotic that could help with balancing this area out, and that is the use of the Heart of Inmost Light. Since we can create 10 shards at once and have our melee available all the time, it makes perfect sense to add in the following exotic for the bonuses we get between all of our abilities at once. This means that we don't need to focus so much on our stats, and we have more free reign as to what perks we want to add in instead. Now with that covered, you're then left with whispers to pick and I would recommend you focus on the following best practices for the most out of the aspects. Whispers of Shards and Whisper of Torment will both provide you with a boost of faster grenade regen, which on top of the exotic will be instant. Whispers of Fissures will help with spreading the damage further which will be important in terms of destroying them, as we'll be destroying our stasis with our weapons. And then Durance will help with extending the freeze effect for longer. This will help in more crowded situations and allow you to control the field for longer. For the weapons, I've decided to go with a close range high power setup to complement this subclass style, but also because I don't need any specific perks to boost my build, so it's all free game from here. A prime example of this is me using the Hawkmoon with its reworked exotic perk as an effective way of clearing out all enemy types in game as long as I net my headshots. As well as having great stats across the board, the Hawkmoon can produce quite a high amount of damage against any enemy type as long as you constantly net headshots until the final round connects. Most primes in games aren't that strong when being used against mages or ultras, or even buffs over enemies, as they don't provide enough damage to do so. The Hawkmoon on the other hand can put in the damage as long as you stay consistent, and this is something that should be easy to do and pull off no matter who you go up against. For a secondary, I'm using the new grenade launcher called Salvage Salvo, and this is honestly my most favourite grenade launcher to be introduced for this season. This grenade launcher is like the truth teller, but better, and the reason for this is the multi perks being available for you to pick and customise to your liking. A great combo I've found for all content to use is Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction, which as you can probably guess, will allow you to wipe out a large group of plumped up enemies from the explosion, and getting a kill as well will allow you to have 2 in the chew compared to 1. This further means that you can fight this back to back against enemies for even more DPS on a larger scale, and don't forget that the one weapon also comes with spike nades for an increasement in direct damage. This weapon has it all, and the fact that this is the only breach of the grenade launcher to have 2 perks that can roll on any other grenade launchers, proves just how superior it is. This will also work alongside my primary with both help me to destroy the glaciers we make so we can gain the benefits of the status shards. 
For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Code ULO rocket launcher with quick draw and cluster bombs, and this will be handy for increased DPS and another great method of shattering enemies. As rocket launchers have gotten a buff, now is a great time to fully use them for the max potential against bosses or generally anything. Swords are still king in terms of quicker DPS, but rockets now can rival them with the right perks, and perks such as Last Impression that increases damage even more will make using legendary rockets a routine usage. For the stats, there are three key areas that you must focus in, and how you go about this can vary in terms of how important it is, as we're using the Heart of Inmost Light to help boost ability synergy further. Resilience, Discipline and Strength will be the go-to stats that will work alongside your Stasis, and Exotic, so not much points will need to be added into them, but enough will need to be added just to balance out how energy is shared. If we take a look at Resilience first, which is at 70, this area will have the most highest cooldown rate compared to anything else being offered within the build, and works out really well for buffering between our grenades and strength. As no specific mods except for Resilience mod or perks are needed for this area, this would leave you with the option to freely slot in any other extra mods that can widely benefit for you, for example, charged with light mods with a focus on extra damage. This added feature will allow me to kill faster and build up energy for all my abilities as they naturally go, and this is the best method to go with if your resilience is already high enough. Next, we have the Discipline stat at 70, and this area should be the second highest stat available, but only if you don't plan on using perks such as Wellspring or Demolitionist for the grenade boost. For my weapon loadout, the only weapon that does have a perk for this area is my grenade launcher, but still I choose not to use it as with the Whispers of Shards and Whispers of Torments available, I can freely build up my grenades from simply shattering or being damaged by enemies, which works in my favour and allows more freedom in weapon usage. On top of that, I've also added in the new Elemental Ordnance mod for a chance of an Elemental Well to drop for an extra boost, and the Bomber mod as well. This should be enough for the build to naturally regen your grenade without the use of needed perks, and of course, with the added on favour of the Heart Image Light perk as well, that should be even more plentiful. Lastly, we have the Strength stat at 60, and this should be the cutoff point for this and this stat only. As we're going to be making use of the two aspects as mentioned earlier, you don't need any further perks or mods to enhance this area anymore, which for most players is a great opportunity to slot in whatever you like. For me, as I've covered all the main areas already, the only thing you could do from here is either invest further into your stats for a higher cooldown, add in charge or warm my cells, or simply leave it as it is, and honestly nothing more you can do from here on out. Please note that this may vary from player to player depending on what sort of armor stats you have. Now as we've covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. So for head, I'm using Discipline, Dynamo and Elemental Light mod. Arm, I'm using Minor Recovery, Unstoppable Hand Cannon, Fastball and Taking Charge mod. Chest, I'm using Minor Recovery, Concussive Dampener times 2 and Elemental Orders mod. Leg, I'm using Minor Recovery, Installation and Stacks on Stacks mod. Mark, I'm using Discipline, Bomber and High Energy Fire mod. From the examples shown, the build is pretty nifty all around the setup that you can use in both PvE or PvP and endgame, without losing the flavour of the setup as a whole. As we have chosen to rely on just this subclass and stats alone to build up what we got, this opens up the opportunity for you to simply mess about with whichever weapons are best for what situations, and the freedom in this means you can be more effective in the field where you're most comfortable. As I mentioned earlier, my loadout focuses on close range, high powered kills to maximise everything I've got, and maybe a deadly threat in close to mid ranges, which I found to be quite interesting for endgame or PvP. A prime example of this is me playing the Nightfall for this week and the many ongoing enemies that charge at you. Facing a Cabal Mage or Ultra up close without the correct effect of weapons tends to be a death sentence for me at times, and even when I do have the correct weapons more to take them on, it's still a death sentence because of their quick burst damage. With the build though, we can easily get through and disrupt any cabal that starts to get risky with me by simply activating our Howl the Storm aspect or use our Glacier Grenades. Both of these methods will be enough to slow down enemies instantly that will then allow you to quickly combo them with our Grenade Launcher for a final finish and since our Grenade Launcher comes packed in with the Chain Reaction perk, we can see the effect go even more wide range and take out anyone else nearby. This when done right can allow the user to clear out an area with just grenades or melee alone without the fear of death looming over you. At the same time, its use in PvE is also effective in PvP, with it being a great option in terms of controlling points and catching, camping or charging players out. The only downside to using this in PvP I found is that Glacial Grenades are quite wonky, 
when landing on certain objects, and you're not guaranteed to get a frozen kill with your weapons in hand. Plus, as we are not using the cryo slam to destroy them much faster, means we need to be very on point with our secondary. Switching the glaciers to dust field instead is a lot more effective in the long run, and although you may miss getting the 5 extra shards in PvP, that shouldn't really be considered a downside. Overall, the build fills in the role it is designed to do fantastically, and honestly is a great addition to the Titan subclass tree, as we can shut down close range enemies with even greater effects. If you wish to make the new aspect worth using, then I would highly recommend you give this build a specific try, when you do get a chance to. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titan for 2 content, if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.